What might astound you is that lightning isn't a mere discharge from positive to negative, rather it forms as a dual-ended tree structure comprising both positive and negative ends. Lightning, whether positive or negative, exhibits distinct characteristics. They travel at varying speeds, one gracefully, the other unpredictable, while one boasts a continuous current, the other does not. Sprites manifest exclusively through positive ground strikes, while gamma ray flashes are linked to positive intracloud lightning. Why does this occur, and how can we make sense of these peculiar differences? Join me as we uncover the secrets behind the enigma of polarity asymmetry in lightning. Benjamin Franklin not only named the two polarities of electricity, but also unraveled the intriguing mystery that veils thunderclouds. Generally negative in lower regions and positive in higher regions, yet occasionally the opposite way around. Today the question of why this occurs remains a captivating enigma. Within the zone of major charge separation, marked by sub-freezing temperatures, supercooled water droplets and ice crystals, a potential link emerges. The asymmetry of the water molecule might play a key role in the thundercloud's polarity asymmetry. On a broader scale, Earth carries a net negative charge, with a contrasting positive charge residing in the ionosphere. Together, the Earth's surface and the ionosphere resemble a charged spherical capacitor, so two oppositely charged conducting electrodes with an insulator in between. The ground is normally negatively charged during fair weather, positive charge is found in the air between the ground and the ionosphere. The positive charge is attached to small particles in the air and is relatively immobile, at least compared to air molecules due to the large size and the large inertia of the particles. These are called large ions. The negative charge on the ground and the positive charge in the air above means that there is a downward pointing 100 to 300 volts per meter electric field during normal fair weather conditions. Note that the ground is normally positively charged underneath a thunderstorm, and the electric field at the ground under a thunderstorm is normally more intense at thousands of volts per meter. The potential of the ionosphere ranges from 150 kilovolts to 600 kilovolts relative to the Earth's surface. One question that arises from this is based on the current flow measured in the atmosphere. It would only take about 10 minutes to discharge the entire Earth's surface. And yet, this doesn't happen. So the obvious question is, what maintains the surface to ionosphere potential difference? This is a question I will park and come back to in a future video. Suffice it to say that currently, there is no satisfactory conventional explanation for this. In the realms of thunderclouds, lightning diverges from conventional laboratory discharges involving metallic electrodes. Conventional discharge experiments generally involve two electrodes with a discharge occurring from one electrode to another. Historically, theories of lightning behaviour were shaped by these laboratory discharge studies, recognising the ease of producing positive polarity discharges over negative ones. This led to the widespread conception in the early 1920s that lightning branches away from regions of positive charge. Thunderstorm observations in the 1930s, however, shattered this notion revealing that downwardly branching lightning predominantly emerges from the lower negative charge of thunderclouds. Here, positive and negative charges disperse across distances ranging from hundreds of metres to kilometres, but are initiated not at an electrode, but right in the midst of the cloud. The majority of lightning flashes unfold as double-ended trees, bridging spaces charged with opposite polarities. One side ventures into the positive charges, while the other explores the realm of the negative charges. Further laboratory experiments unveiled the double-ended structure of discharges, exposing an asymmetry between both ends. Detailed radio frequency images of lightning breakdown process showcased an order of magnitude asymmetry in energy radiation. Strikingly, the positive end identified in the early 1920s emitted significantly less energy, while the negative end resonated with intense and noisy energy. Part of this disparity may stem from the contrasting mobility between free electrons and positive ions. Examining a conductive filament in an ambient electric field reveals that at the positive end, mobile electrons converge towards the higher field, encouraging continued extension. Conversely, at the other end, mobile electrons diverge into a weaker electric field, 
making it a less favourable zone. Consequently, the positive end dominates the overall structure, creating a favourable environment for extension. Considering the implications for a charge initiated at a point and evolving into a double-ended tree, we find that the positive stream begins initially until the electric field at the initiation point is potent enough to launch a negative stream into the opposite direction. However, this doesn't account for the substantial asymmetry observed in radio frequency observations. Key insights may be found in laboratory discharges within 1 to 10 meter gaps, revealing a clear asymmetry in the behaviour of positive and negative leaders in point to plane discharge. Positive leaders smoothly progress across the air gap from the point, while negative leaders requiring high voltage jump in steps and exhibit more erratic behaviour. The acceleration of electric charge is essential for radiating electromagnetic energy. While a positive leader extends through extension of brush or positive streamers at its head, a negative leader is more intricate. An intermittent bidirectional development near the head involves the extension of positive streamers backwards and negative streamers forward. This bidirectional segment heats up, becoming fully ionised and the ensuing current pulse peaks at hundreds to thousands of amps. This stands in stark contrast to the current flow in positive leaders with similar gap geometry. The intermittent bidirectional development serves as a radiating element absent in positive leaders, potentially explaining the observed asymmetry in radio emissions. Moving beyond the initial breakdown process, there's the recoil leader, which is a secondary electrical discharge which propagates along the lightning channel that has been established by previous streamers and leaders. Unlike the initial breakdown process, the recoil leader travels at speeds significantly greater than the virgin breakdown. It extends rapidly through a previously ionised path, contributing to the continuation and intensification of lightning discharge. Strikingly, positive recoil leaders have never been observed, posing a profound mystery despite seemingly similar conditions for negative and positive breakdown at the cutoff process's end. One plausible explanation suggests that recoil leaders are also bidirectional discharges, featuring a smooth progressing, radio frequency quiet positive end and an erratic, noisy negative end. Cloud to ground lightning flashes serve as conduits for both negative and positive charges to reach the ground. Despite their coexistence, negative flashes dominate the scene, occurring nearly 10 times more frequently, perhaps owing to the proximity of the primary negative charge in thunderclouds to the ground. What's particularly intriguing is the evident asymmetry in the behaviour of these lightning types. In the realm of positive ground flashes, a striking pattern emerges. They almost exclusively consist of a single stroke, succeeded by a continuous current. In contrast, the more prevalent negative flashes tend to unfold with multiple discrete strokes, often lacking a significant continuing current. To unravel this asymmetry, one must consider both ends of the discharge tree. In positive ground flashes, the opposite end supports a negative polarity, exhibiting a tendency to supply a larger continuing current compared to the negative ground flash counterpart. The swift electrical connection between the descending leader and a conductive ground plane is set in motion by an attachment process that involves upward propagating streamers emanating from the Earth's surface. Laboratory experiments featuring both polarities of leaders unmistakably demonstrate a faster final jump with negative polarity leaders. When examining lightning flashes directed towards an ocean surface, numerous studies have unveiled anomalous behaviour in the amplitude of the first stroke, specifically in negative polarity flashes. Similar oceanic concentrations in positive polarity lightning have not been apparent, but one factor to consider is that there are overall far fewer positive strikes to ground compared to positive, although many studies confirm this bias. The intriguing asymmetry might find its root in the fact that the negative leader is not only hotter but also more electrically conductive when compared to its positive counterpart. Furthermore, the considerable speed at which the negative leader advances surpasses that of the positive leader, contributing to a more rapid closure of the gap. We've previously delved into the core challenge of understanding lightning physics, specifically the initiation of a lightning flash. In our exploration, 
One intriguing hypothesis suggested that runaway electrons play a fundamental role in sparking the initiation of lightning. Observations, however, point to a fascinating nuance. A specific phase and polarity of lightning seems crucial for accelerating electrons into a runaway state. In simpler terms, certain types of lightning trigger runaway electrons, rather than the other way round. When it comes to ground-level X-ray bursts, these phenomena are closely tied to descending leaders of negative polarity. On the flip side, gamma-ray bursts are more commonly associated with positive flashes, not necessarily ground strikes, but often manifesting a double-ended tree with a negative end positioned at the top. The key insight gleaned from these observations suggests that the negative end of the lightning tree is actively repelling electrons, which subsequently run away and generate X-ray bursts propagating in the same direction as the accelerated electrons. Sprites are captivating luminous electrical discharges in the upper atmosphere, which are born from intense cloud-to-ground lightning. First captured in images in the 1990s, these phenomena have since graced thunderstorms worldwide. Much like lightning, sprites manifest as a double-ended tree, extending in opposite directions from their point of origin. Wilson, in a pioneering move back in 1925, proposed that the electrostatic field generated by lightning flashes could surpass the dielectric strength of the mesosphere sparking a discharge. While Wilson's mechanism for sprite initiation via conventional dielectric breakdown is polarity independent, sprites linked to negative cloud-to-ground lightning flashes are exceptionally rare. Despite thousands of positive ground flash sprite associations, only two well-documented instances of sprites originating from ground flashes with negative polarity have been published. This rarity stands in stark contrast to the prevalence of negative cloud-to-ground flashes. This distinction might hinge on the fact that negative flashes often feature multiple strokes, each with a current cutoff and no continuing event. In contrast, positive flashes typically exhibit a single stroke followed by a sustained continuing current. The physical implication is that the middle atmosphere responds to negative cloud-to-ground flashes is impulsive and brief, while that to positive flashes is prolonged and sustained. In conclusion, the intricate dynamics of atmospheric electricity reveal a fascinating order within the seemingly chaotic dance of lightning, the dual-ended tree structure with positive and negative leaders exhibiting distinct behaviours underscores the nuanced interplay between positive and negative potentials. Positive leaders characterised by smooth progression and radio quietness contrast with the erratic and radio noisy nature of negative leaders. Examining cloud-to-ground lightning further emphasises these disparities, with negative lightning being more common yet composed of multiple strokes, while positive lightning, though rare, manifests as a single stroke with continuous current. The association of the negative end of a lightning tree with X-ray and gamma-ray production adds another layer to the complexity. And then there are sprites, which are exclusively generated by positive ground flashes. This nuanced understanding underscores the pivotal roles played by positive and negative flashes in shaping the dynamic symphony of the skies. Amidst the intricacies, there exists a profound order showcasing the orchestrated beauty within the realm of atmospheric electricity. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.